everyone, my name is Valerie and I'm from Superlife Co. So my company, we create a series of products that are actually sustainable and we help consumers to lose weight and not gain it back. So let me go through a little bit of my background and how I started the company. So um, about four years ago, so that's myself um, in a picture. So I actually run a, a training company, a finance training company. Um, I worked about 16 hours a day. So with that number of hours, I actually suffer from constant bent up. So I think at the seventh or eighth year, I actually had a really bad burnt out such that my friends and my family members actually urged me to go overseas for a break. And that's what I did. Um, I went to the States. Um, I recovered from superfoods. So one of the main things that I actually ate a lot was quinoa. And uh, it's from this place called Protein Bar. And I remember the first time I ate it was like, wow, what's this? It's really tasty. So I googled quinoa and I was like, wow, it's really tasty. And it's so nutritious. It's even more nutritious than brown rice. And when I came back to Singapore, I couldn't really find quinoa anywhere in Singapore. And even when I finally found it, it tasted weird. It was very bitter. So I started asking around and my friends say, oh, if you want nice quinoa, like those from the States, they are generally from Peru. And I got some friends who brought, bring it back for me. And then a lot of my friends noticed a change in me. I'm no longer like sickly. I used to look really pale and I always fall sick. And they asked me, what do you do and what do you eat? I was like, oh, I started eating on superfood and one of the main um, staple is actually quinoa. So I stopped eating rice. I only eat quinoa. So a lot of my friends are like, oh, you're so extreme. So then I cooked for them and they go like, whoa, this is tasty. And then they came to my house all the time like, Val can cook me quinoa. So after a while, I'm like, oh my God, this is way too much. So I put it into meal preps for them. So with ingredients and everything inside. And I told them, hey, take this bag, add into your rice cooker, just add 1.5 cups of water, press cook. If you don't know how to cook, then you're an idiot. And so everyone laughed, they took it back. And friends of friends of friends wanted it. And that's how it became a business. So um, because I'm really busy person, and most importantly, I'm extremely lazy. So throughout, in my mind, I was just like, oh, I need to make something really instant. So, and I was very stubborn, very, very stubborn. I'm like, I cannot have any MSG, no additives, no flavorings, no chemicals and stuff. So it took me about a year plus before I found a technique which only remove water and oxygen and that, so that there's naturally no preservatives and there's no additives and chemicals inside and yet it's tasty. And that's how Instant Quinoa was born. So basically after that, I also realized that when I started eating them, I became more and more lean and my friend was just like, oh yeah, you become, you're shrinking. And I was like, yeah. And then I looked into my diet and I googled them and realized, oh, okay, because I eat a lot of cacao, I eat a lot of quinoa, they actually boost my metabolism rate naturally. And a lot of my friends who started eating them actually lost weight too. And what's more amazing is that they lose weight and they didn't gain it back. And that's how the whole tagline of we help you lose weight and not gain it back became um, the, the motto of the business. Right, so um, our vision of the company, we envision ourselves right to be the most sustainable solution for two things. One is weight loss, which we are at now, and eventually we intend to go into clear skin. So let me explain to what sustainability is. So we have three definitions to our sustainability. The first definition is sustainable in terms of result, right? Like when you lose weight, you should not gain it back. When you have clear skin, you should not have bad skin again. So that is what meant by sustainability. The second sustainability is in terms of health. It should be good to your body such that you can do it for a long time. So if imagine it's um, processed food, for example, you can't eat it for a long time, it's not good for your health, then it's no longer sustainable. And the last sustainability and the most important one is it has to be affordable. If it's not affordable, it will never be sustainable. So this is what we envision ourselves to be moving forward. And our mission, of course, is to instill confidence in people. Of course, most of our clients are women, but men, there's a lot of guys who are jumping on board as well, so that they become confident, they become happy, and most importantly, healthy. Right, so, um, yeah, so we pride ourselves to be an innovative company, come out with a lot of innovative products. 
So people would stop by and ask, whoa, what's this? You just add hot water and you can eat quinoa. You no longer need to cook it and stuff like that. So we also come up with a range of other products like fish dry fruits. We also have our um, line of beauty products coming up as well. So that's um, our future plan moving forward. Um, we aim to solve the problem of unsustainability and also unnatural solution. It doesn't need to be just weight loss. Actually, in general, in general, anything, but uh, we are focusing on weight loss at this point. Right, so we have a few channels. So um, generally, we do B2C and B2B. B2C is through our website. So we have an e-commerce site, which is at superlife.co. And we also have a diet routine where people just need to look at one week, four weeks or 12 weeks if you're lazy to think. So we, we bundle it up for you. So that's at hffp.superlife.co. So you can check us out on the website too. So let's go a little bit on the routine. HFFP. So what does that stand for? High in fiber, fat and protein. So a lot of people are into diets such as um, even keto, um, paleo, vegan. So according to nutrition and dietitians, a lot of them actually told me that like keto is actually not very sustainable. Unless you are very, very sure what kind of fiber, what kind of everything you're putting in your body. So they always recommend 50% carbohydrates. And the carbohydrates are usually complex carbohydrates. So this is a little bit technical, which means you actually break down the sugar slowly and they're high in fiber as well. So quinoa, it's a complex carbohydrate, for instance. Um, it has to be high in good fats as well. So fats actually lower your GI, your glycemic index. And then also protein. So protein helps you to increase your metabolism rate and activate your um, inactive metabolic cells. So this is something that people come to us and, and ask me. So um, how does protein help me? So one of the main things is that as we age, right, about 3 to 5% of our metabolic cells becomes inactive. So the key thing to sustainable um, lean body is the fact that you always increase your metabolism rate. Imagine going back to the time when you are like 16 or 18, you know, you eat a lot and you're still like burning off the fats. But I've got clients who come to me and say, hey, well, you know what, I breathe air, I put on weight. I'm like, okay, that means your metabolism rate is low. So we, we actually help them to measure their metabolic age and we get them to go on a HFFP diet routine. Within one month, you can actually see your age going down. So most of our clients go down about two years um, after eating our diet for like one month. right? So my metabolic age today, um, it's how many years? More than 10 years younger than my age itself, than my actual age. So I told people, oh, that's because consistently I've been eating this diet for like four years. But um, a lot of clients within months of on this diet, their metabolic age goes down. And so you can metabolic out a lot faster, can burn calories a lot faster as well. Right. So um, this is actually um, a very simple routine. It only contains morning, take cacao powder, lunchtime, take quinoa. That's it. Very, very simple. And we have this headline, life is too short to eat bad food or bland food. So our Quinoa, as you can see from this picture, is actually a tom yum soup with quinoa and it has received very good command in terms of taste because I strongly believe that if you want to eat something good, it has to be again sustainable, right? Which means it cannot be not tasty. So if it's not tasty, no one will eat it for a long time. Right, so um, yeah, so um, I already briefly explained that uh, how it actually helps to burn fats. So cacao actually helps to burn your belly fats and uh, it's very high in fiber, so it helps in digestions and also helps in gut health. And um, quinoa itself also helps to, um, sorry, protein itself also helps to reduce hunger hormones, particularly in quinoa, it comes in complete protein. So, sorry, there's a lot of technical stuff here, but complete protein means it contains all nine essential amino acids, so um, which is not possible to be produced by our body. So it's important that you get enough complete protein, especially for vegetarian and vegan, because complete protein generally comes from meat and egg. Right, so these are some of the products that we have. So instant quinoa, you know, we have the tom yum, spinach, tofu, and shiitake mushroom. Meal preps, you actually just need to throw into a rice cooker, cook it within 15 minutes. We have mushroom, spicy curry, and Japanese seaweed. Um, the new flavor that is coming up for our instant quinoa you know, is actually salted egg yolk. Um, instead of soup, it's going to be dry, so you just need to put half the water and then it will dry up and then you can eat it. Right, so some of the success stories, so we do have quite a fair bit of success stories with our customers. One of them actually lost 20 kg 
right just by eating our quinoa and he's not like the walking person that's always like oh it's sustainable it's sustainable he's telling everyone even when we're doing both at like takashimaya he's like oh you should eat quinoa because quinoa is great it helps me lose my weight and it didn't gain back and now I can eat fried chicken at night, things like that. So we do have quite a fair bit of firm believer in terms of that. And we believe that in order to do things well these days, it's important that we become very sustainable in the solution. And yeah, so um, you can go to our website, superlife.co to find out more. So I'm Valerie, thank you. Bye. Be yourself out on stage and sharing about what it is that you do and what you're passionate about. So my name is Melanie Midex. I live in Bali, Indonesia, but I've been there for about uh, nearly five years, but originally from Australia. And I've trained as a psychosomatic therapist, I've been an entrepreneur, and part of being a psychosomatic therapist is also doing face reading. Um, face reading isn't a psychic modality, though. so I can't tell you your future, I can't tell you if you're going to win the lottery next week or anything like that. What I can tell you is what you're really good at and what your zone of genius is by looking at your face, which we'll get into today. Um, I also have another special guest with me this week as well. So Lisa, if you want to come and stand up. <laughs> Lisa's here in Singapore with me. We're actually running a um, retreat this weekend together. Lisa is a um, specialist in meditation and mindfulness and is also an executive performance coach. So she'll be joining me today throughout the um, program that we've got for you to do some mindfulness and meditation. Great, absolutely. So get <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So um, before we get started, let's see if I can work this out. I just want to let you know that whenever I present, I always call it more of a conscious conversation. It's not about me standing up here and you know just blurbing out information to you. I really like interaction and I ask at any point in time if you have any questions please ask. I'm going to be bringing out some new concepts that maybe you haven't heard about before or talking about some things that you may have heard a little bit about but you want more information. Please at any time put up your hand and let's have a conversation about that. Conversations are talking especially for in an informal place between two or more people in which ideas are exchanged and I think we all learn from each other. It's not just about me sharing what I know but you can also be sharing your information in as well. Before we do that though, though too, I would also like you all to take your shoes off tonight because we are not talking about business strategy. We're talking about how to feel connected and how to feel more yourself in the world. So if you want to take your shoes off and just get comfortable, feel your feet on the ground, don't be shy. <laughs> <laughs> You'll feel a lot better about it. <laughs> shoes, not shirt. Shoes. 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 <laughs> Take your shoes off. Good, okay, so as I said, I'm a psychosomatic therapist, a face reader, an entrepreneur, a speaker, and I teach sharper philosophy for business. So I started out um, my training as a psychosomatic therapist, and what that means is it's understanding the body and how it's connected to our mind and our emotions. So basically, I can read the body to understand what your emotional well-being is like, um, which is interesting. So a lot of the time, we um, are operating from a space where there's, you know, we're not really thinking, we're just going through the motions. We get more, we're calling it an urban brain this uh, weekend where it's like you're just sort of on, automat on automatic pilot, so to speak, and psychosomatic therapy really helps you to get more into your body, to really respond to the world through your human brain rather than an automatic robotic type of brain. Um, so I'll be talking all about this today, and then what, Lisa, I might just get you to come back up again. Um, Barefoot. Do <laughs> you want to just introduce lighting. yourself and what it is you do? I'm a bit shorter now. <laughs> I have been in the corporate world for a really long time, so I was head of sales for Australian companies and global companies as well. Um, I moved from that into coaching, wellness coaching, corporate coaching, and then I studied meditation. 
So I'm a certified um, meditation teacher, facilitator, and I work with a lot of corporate um, clients to teach them mindfulness. And so my focus within meditation is to focus you on mindfulness so you develop that self-awareness. And we're not in that flight and fight mode. We're not, as Melanie said, we're not overwhelmed by the day-to-day. -day, and we can actually connect with who we are and what we're actually trying to achieve in life. So that's a quick summary, yeah? Okay, so let's talk about some big issues first. Um, you know, we're living in this world at the moment where the world is really changing. Uh, you'll notice around on the news, you know, all sorts of things happening in the world from environmental things, from stress and uh, depression, uh, talking about um, artificial intelligence and where technology is taking us and our cities are getting bigger. There's a lot of things happening in the world that are causing us to think, hey, what's going on? And, how can we help and what can we do to serve to, to make it a better place? Um, but in amongst that, you've got your own world that you need to look out for. So it's like we can get distracted and get overwhelmed by what's happening out there, but what we really need to do is to start looking at what's happening in the world within ourselves. And, you know, we have our own challenges, right? We've got challenges such as, you know, creating a successful business for yourself. Uh, you've got relationship challenges, whether it be with loved ones or friends or business partners. We've got to be really good at um, building relationships. Um, money is always a, a nice little stressor that can come up uh, that we have to deal with. And um, also our health and well-being, so making sure that we're looking after ourselves. And you know, all of these things can start to accumulate and um, you know, when that happens, we can really move into this stress and anxiety state. Now, as entrepreneurs, I think, you know, we're already stepping out of our comfort zone so much and then we put all of these other everyday kind of stresses on the top and it can become quite intense. So, my um, whole point of this presentation for you today is to, for you to walk away with some other ideas of how you can sort of handle these situations as you're building your business and from a different perspective. Um, in 2017, the United Nations stated that stress and depression hit the top of the ladder for fatalities in the Western world above war and natural disasters. When I read that statistic, I was like, are you kidding me? Like, if you think back 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, was that the case? Like, you can see how much the world has changed and it's really up to us to start taking responsibility for ourselves, for our well-being and making sure that we're looking after how we're feeling because that has a ripple effect into the outside world. And that's why I love psychosomatic therapy because it looks at your body, it looks at your inner world and how you can balance that and, and get that to a really nice um, equilibrium state for you to be able to get out into the world and do what it is that you want to do. So I'm going to tell you a short story first and then we'll get into the face ringing part, I promise. Um, so, how this all came about. So I studied psychosomatic therapy in Australia and I started my psychosomatic therapy um, business over there. So I was working in a clinic and um, but what was happening was I was attracting a lot of more like anxiety and stress and depression type clients in a little room which is why I left the nine to five. I kind of felt like I recreated that scenario in my own business. I was like this isn't really what I wanted because I love traveling, I uh, love you know, working with really uh, motivated people. And I ended up moving to Bali because I heard there was a very big entrepreneurial community there. And it sounded great and I learned a lot about online business. Uh, but at the same time, it wasn't easy. Like I was struggling a lot as well. So this was the, my little first villa that I had on my own. It cost me three million rupiah a month, which sounds like a lot, but actually it's about $300, about $364 a month. Um, it was very simple. It was just a one bedroom with a bathroom. I had my bed, I had a desk, and I had this little chair out the front. And I'd been going through this uh, fight or flight kind of scenario where I was having these like really big emotional breakdowns, like why isn't my business working? What can I do? You know, I don't know how I'm going to pay my bills next week. All these sorts of things. And I was sitting on that chair, and I had my big emotional release. I had my big cry, and I was like, what do I know really well? because I've been trying to do business, being taught by everyone else, what do I know really well? I know the chakra system. So I looked at my own chakra system, I was like, right, I'm doing all the right things to um, really vitalize my base chakra on all my other chakras. And then I thought, what about business? Does my business have a chakra system? And I started thinking about 
how business fits into the different chakras of the chakra system energies and, um, and it totally made sense. So I'm going to be sharing that with you today and ever since then I can just see there really is no separation between you and your business. How you're feeling on the inside as you build your business will be reflected in how your business is going. And what I've managed to do is to line things up so you can see what part of your business you need to work at at any time. Since then, things have changed. Oh yeah, my, story, my solution has been looking at your body, to really be paying attention to how you're feeling, paying attention to your zone of genius, uh, but paying attention to what you're really good at and working with that, which is what we'll talk about today. Um, since then, this is now my new villa, so I've got a pool now, I've got a two-story place, it's a much more uh, comfortable place to live in. I've um, just been speaking at some conscious uh, summit, global summits and things, um, about two weeks ago I did a training with Lululemon um, here in Singapore helping their staff to move through change and transition within their, um, within their, within their own uh, stores there and then next year I'm actually going to be talking on stage with Elizabeth Gilbert so it's gone from oh my god what am I going to do to this whole new world opening up because I've really learned how to make sure I'm in alignment with what it is that I'm doing so this is the, what can happen when you really start listening to yourself so tonight we're going to talk about what your chakra system actually is. We're going to do face reading and finding out what your zone of genius is. Then we're going to talk about your business-based chakra. And at the end, I've got a really special face split reveal that I want to share with you about too. So there's four things we're going to be doing. In between each one of those, I'm going to get Lisa to come up and we'll do a bit of mindfulness and meditation as well. And um, yeah, as I said, if you have any questions along the way, please put up your hand and ask. Can I ask folks, who here knows about the chakra system? Who's heard about it? Yeah. <coughs> who doesn't know about the chakra system? Put your hand up. Okay, good. So we've got a nice mix of people in the room here. Sometimes it's good to have people that don't know anything because it's a good refresher for those that do know something about it as well. But first, two minutes with Lisa. <laughs> two minutes. Oh, okay. Okay, behind me. Um, mindfulness is a bit of a buzzword these days as well. So, does anyone want to tell me what they think mindfulness is? Consciousness. Consciousness, yeah. Yeah. Being in the present moment. If you think about stress in your day-to-day -day life, where do you think it might be coming from? What's creating it in terms of your thoughts? Any guesses? Yeah, and most of our thoughts, believe it or not, are past or future. They're actually very rarely about the present moment. So if we're ruminating on the past, that can often put us in stress mode because we're thinking, oh gosh, I was in this meeting the other day and I said this and I shouldn't have. Or I'm thinking about the future and what I'm trying to create and the bill that needs to be paid next week and the kids and the list. So this all creates stress. If we're actually truly in the present moment, there's very little stress in the present moment because we just think about what we're doing right now. So it's only when we're thinking about the future and the past. So that's why mindfulness is so great in stress relief and getting rid of anxiety as well. Um, I will also say though, in terms of stress, I want to make it very clear that there's a healthy level of stress. Um, it gets out of bed in the morning. <coughs> things done. <laughs> we need to get things done. Um, but then there's an unhealthy level of stress as well. So I'll stop there. I'll elaborate on that a bit more a bit later. But if I can just get you all right now to close your eyes. Close your eyes. Take a really big deep breath and take it way down into the belly. Not the chest, belly. Each time you take that inhalation, feel your belly expand. And each time you exhale, just release. Releasing anything negative, releasing the to-do list. Just be really conscious of that breath as it enters past the nose, tip of the nose, the back of the throat, down past the lungs, and expanding the belly, 
And notice where it is for you that you connect with that breath. Maybe you feel it more on the tip of the nose. Coolness, the warmth. in the belly, the back of the throat. Just be a place for you. When you connect with the breath, you can only ever be in the present moment. So it's a great tool to make sure when things are getting chaotic that we're connecting in with that breath. And each new breath is giving you new life. So it's providing oxygen to every cell in your body. Every single cell. It's rejuvenating. And each exhalation takes out any old stagnant energy. Every breath is giving you new life. And that will always connect you to the present moment. So now we're feeling all nice and present in the room, present in your body, ready to learn, ready to ask questions. So, what is your chakra system and what are the mechanics around it? Where does it come from? Well, this is what we're going to follow through today. So we're going to find out where it comes from, how many energies there actually are in the chakra system, what they actually mean, and how does the chakra system work? Um, a lot of the time I notice, you know, there's a lot of healing modalities that talk about chakra energies. There's people that say they'll um, block your energies, they balance your chakra energies. And then there's always this question, but what are you actually doing? <laughs> so in this little uh, piece, we're going to talk about what, what is actually happening within your chakra system. Because I really love to know how things work. I'm very spiritual and energetic, but I need to know the mechanics to make me feel better about it. <laughs> So um, the chakra system came from India around uh, 1500 to 500 BC. It actually um, is a part of Hindu, Jainism and Buddhism religions, but it isn't a religious uh, tool. It's basically used as a um, more or less like a personal development tool where they teach people about life and how to walk through life. Yes, you can. Back onto the science side of this, I looked at this quite a while ago, a few years ago, and I found a map of the adrenal system, and the chakra system matches perfectly with the adrenal system as well from a science perspective. So I thought that was really inf interesting information because it just kind of shows you that ancient wisdom already knew what was going on in the adrenal as well. It is. It's, I, find, I can see the chakra system in so many things around the place. Um, and it's true, it plays out in your body so many different ways. So it's, um, you know, the more you delve into it, the more you learn about it, the more you'll see it all over the place. Thank you, Lisa. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's been around for a really long time. And this is what why, my, why I was so curious about it as a child, because I actually knew about it as I was growing up, but I didn't have anyone I felt I could ask about it, because I was in Australia, you know, my family isn't part of any of those religions. And not that that would be a problem, but I just didn't know the right questions or the right people to ask. Um, but there was something that played in my mind is, if something has been around for such a long time, surely there's something to it. Um, and so that's what really got me um, exploring this more later on in life. So there are seven, there are actually more than seven chakra energies. There's plenty of chakra energies that you have, uh, energy centers, um, but the main, chakra energies you have are seven and there's seven uh, chakra energies that run up the base of your spine and each one relates to a different emotion that you feel it relates to a different area of your body it relates to a different area of your life and they all vibrate in different ways 
And so what you're trying to do with your chakra system is to get all of those chakra energies performing at its ultimate uh, vibration and that, that's when you're actually going to experience flow in your life. If they're not vibrating at those um, really uh, optimal levels, what happens is that's when we start coming up against little hurdles like this isn't working and why isn't this happening and you know those sorts of things which we experience every day but there's times where everything feels like it falls into place and then there's times where everything feels like it's just really hard work and so this is why you can use your chakra system to see and help you navigate where you need to go within your life and within your business as well. Um, for each of these chakras, i put up here, uh, so your base chakra, these are the names of the chakras, sorry I'm getting more confused with my little clue there. Um, so your base chakra sits at the base of your spine and we're going to be talking about this quite a lot today. And this one is actually related to your family and community. So it's the first chakra that's developed from the age of zero to seven. Um, and it's how you feel supported. So how you feel supported within yourself and how you feel supported by the community and people around you. So for example, in this room right now, you've got a lot of like-minded people who are your friends, who are your colleagues, and you're all supporting each other. So there's a really big, strong base chakra energy in this room right now. Um, and we need that to feel supported for the rest of our chakra energies to um, operate at that ultimate um, vibration. The next chakra is your sacral chakra. And this sits around your hip area and your reproductive area. And this is related to your relationships, your well-being, your abundance, your creativity and your sensuality. This, the base chakra is all about your relationship with community. Your sacral chakra is your relationships with one other. So that could be a lover, a partner, it could be a friendship, it could be a business relationship. So this is where we learn how to really uh, communicate and connect with one other person. Your solar plexus chakra is the next one up. And this sits just around your diaphragm area, just above your belly button. It's actually the pump that pumps the energy through your body. So when we were doing that breathing exercise just now, that meditative exercise, it's like that, it's getting your diaphragm moving so it can pump the energy through your chakra system. Now the solar plexus is all about your personal identity. It's about your personal power and how you come and step out into the world. So when you're um, you know, standing on stage, you don't want to be talking like this and all like this because then it's really hard to understand and you might get a bit tired. You want to be like talking like this and standing up and getting people taking notice. Um, this is igniting your solar plexus energy, which is where you've got your courage and your uh, charisma and your own personal identity coming out into the world. The next chakra is the heart chakra. Um, and this sits around your heart centre and it's all about, for me, it's the, the lens that you see of the world. It's how you look at the world. Are you looking into a lens of compassion or are you looking at one that where the world's out to get you? So it's really learning to live with compassion. These lower three chakras here are, are much more earthier and have a lot more um, connection with real life kind of, not issues, real life areas that you deal with in every day. Whereas these top three chakras that I'm about to talk about, they're more etheric. So they're more the spiritual, um, intuitive type of energy about it. So we're going to spend a lot of time in these more earthy chakras today. But as you move up, it gets a little bit more etheric. Your throat chakra is all about speaking your truth. And it doesn't need to be necessarily speaking your truth. It's communicating your truth and knowing what that truth is. Um, so, you know, you might... Think one thing, but you might be saying another, and that's when you know your throat chakra can be out of balance. Your brow chakra, which a lot of people know about, it can also be called your third eye, is connected to your intuition. So uh, really learning your how to uh, tap into your intuition, and to me this is really the centre of leadership. It's where you're going to understand what's right and what's wrong for you, and to be able to make decisions, even if the world is saying to you, that doesn't sound right, I don't think you should do it that way, but there's something inside of you that's like, no, I'm going to go for this, I'm going to do it. That's when you know you're tapping into your intuition and leading through that space as well. And now we've got the crown chakra at the top, which is your universal connection. So to me, this is where we get our vision, our purpose, um, those insights of what it is that we're really here to do. So all of you in this room, you're obviously all in business, so you, you, there's something here that you're really wanting to achieve in the world. So remembering to tap back into that, and it's like, how am I going to get that done? 
So that's a basic overview of the Sharpie system. Does anyone have any questions at all around that? Yes? Yeah. Physical, physical, uh, something physical? Is it something physical? They are physical, yes. I'm about to show you what, how those energies all play out, actually. So this might answer your question. So each of those chakra energies runs up the back of your spine, okay? But then, this is how it works, okay? So um, basically, you've got the tip. There's a tip that sits in the center of your spine for each one of those chakra energies. And at that tip, I call that, um, a rec that's your key of destiny. So it's like where all the information of what your true purpose is lies in within that tip. And then as the chakra energy comes out, you've got this cone area here. And in that cone area is where all your emotions sit. It's where your mindset patterns sit. It's basically everything that you've learned and you've experienced in life is held within this cone area. And then at the filter, this is where um, you've got, where it bumps up against other people's um, chakra energies too. So you know when you walk into a room and you walk in and you're like, oh, it's a good vibe in here. Like, you know, I'm feeling good. You know, it's because everybody's chakra energies will be sort of like-minded, so to speak. And then sometimes you can walk into a room and it's like, Ooh, what's going on in here or you felt you know you, someone's had an argument and then all of a sudden there's you know some sort of funny energy happening it's your your energies aren't matching what's in the room or they're feeling off they're not feeling connected so this is how come you you're already feeling the energies even though you may not know what's actually going on does that make sense to you a little bit <laughs> so you can't it's not that you some people can see chakra energies, but um, when you know how the energies are, are filtered, so there's like seven coming up your spine, and then the, the cone of the energy comes out. So there's one coming out in front of you and one coming out behind you as well. And so when I walk into a room and then someone else walks into the room, those energies are actually um, touching each other outside of your body. So it's not like a physical thing that happens, it's more of an energetic thing. And then that's why it's important to surround yourself by people who are supportive and are like-minded and even two steps ahead of perhaps where you want to be because you want your energies to line up to that sort of that space. Does that make more sense for you? So that kind of sensation, there is some kind of sensation you're feeling, like feeling? Yes. Through your emotions, through your emotions, through uh, basically what happens in your world around you as well. Yeah? Because that, our outside world is a reflection of what's going on on the inside. <coughs> so even if something happens to you outside of you and you're like, what's that all about? You know, you know, something didn't go right, there might be something that needs to be looked at inside of you to shift that, then the outside world will repli re replicate that. when you're meditating and then in everyday life it can be a little bit different because you're moving so you may not feel the sense it depends how sensitive you are and how much work you do to to tune into it basically um, but when you're starting out it can be through just understanding and I'll talk about more about it like how you're feeling physically what's happening in your outside world and then you'll start to know if it's it's out or if it's in tune basically yeah thank you any more questions around this? Okay, so now let's get to the face reading part of this. 
So basically, um, face reading is part of psychosomatic therapy, and psychosomatic therapy uses the chakra system through all of its work. So basically, every part of your body relates to a different area, um, sorry, a different chakra energy, which relates to a different area of your life. And your face is actually a summary of your whole body. And so that's why the face can be such a good place to start, because we're getting a summary of what's going on below. So I'm going to go through um, how face reading actually works and what all the features of your face relate to. Then we're going to have a look at your Prime Minister and just have a little bit of a, a face reading play with that. Um, and then we're going to do some face reading with each other. So we're going to be looking at each other's chin. So you're going to be um, doing some face reading for each other. And then we're going to be talking a bit about your zone of genius when it comes to face reading. So, how does it work? So basically, as I said, uh, when we went through the chakra system before, each chakra energy has a different area of life that it uh, relates to. And so that relates to a different um, feature on your face. So your chin is related to your base chakra. And this is all about how you feel supported in life. So we're looking at the shapes of um, your features that will tell the differences in, or sorry, share more about your personality in different types of way. So um, I won't tell, share too much about that right now because we'll do that a bit later. Um, but your mouth is related to your sacral chakra, so it's all about the taste you have for life, how much pleasure that you have in your life, how you like to communicate and express yourself as well. Your nose is all about your personal identity and how you like to step out into the world because, look, your nose actually steps out from your face, so it's the thing that's coming out. So when we look at the nose, it's all about your own personal identity. Um, when we look at your eyes, this is related to your heart chakra. So your eyes are the connector to your soul. So when our eyes meet, our souls are connecting, and the window to your soul, sorry. Um, so how your eyes are shaped, the colour, all sorts of things will indicate um, what your heart essence is like. Then when we move up to your eyebrows here, they're all related to your throat chakra, so how you communicate. It's the, th it's the um, feature of your face that differentiates between your head and your heart. So depending on how thick they are, how defined they are, what shape they are, will say a lot about how you're communicating to the outside world, but also how you're communicating within your own inner world as well. Now we've got the brow chakra here, which is about intuition. So I'm looking at how high the forehead is here as to how easily and quickly you can um, tune into your intuition. And the crown chakra is at the top, so we're looking at the hairline here. So in a face reading session, they usually go for 60 minutes, so I'm not going to go through the whole thing, and that's why I'm running a workshop on the weekend on it as well. Um, but it can be really interesting to know that your body is such a reflection of your inner world. So how you feel about yourself, your inner critic, um, how you feel you're going to succeed, all of these things are going to be represented in your face. Um, and we'll also be talking about your zone of genius because sometimes there might be features on your face you're like, I'm not really too keen on that one. Like, I know for me, I, you know, and I never used to like my nose until I learnt about it and I was like, oh, I can see what the strength is of the, the shape of my face and now I'm going to step into it and embrace it a lot more. So, you know, your nose is all about your leadership and I always find it is one of those things that a lot of people aren't very um, fond of if they're to pick something on their face. Um, but you know, when you can be really love who you are and love what you see when you look at yourself in the mirror, everything will start shifting in your world and in your business at the same time when you really embrace those characteristics. Um, shall we look at your Prime Minister? Yeah. <laughs> now I don't know, I'm not a very political person, so I don't really know anything about what your Prime Minister has been up to, so I'm just saying that from the start. Um, and I'm not going to say too much either because I just want to be a bit careful, but um, I want to ask you guys first, when you look at this man's face, how does that make you feel? <laughs> what, what, what is his, if you were to think about his personality, what do you think his strengths are? Nice nose? Organised? Sorry? Assertive? Cunning? Cunning? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a 
a politician, exactly. So, and this is why it's exactly why I picked a politician as well. <laughs> so when we look at, um, there's a few things when I looked at this photo, I was like, oh yeah, I can see this. Generally speaking with politicians, they will have fairly, um, like I know he's smiling in this and I think it looks a little bit different when he's actually natural. But one thing that really stood out for me is that his bottom lip is quite big and his top lip is a lot thinner. So um, the top lip is about uh, creativity and sensuality and the bottom lip is our communication lip. And when I saw this, I was like, okay, he's a bit of a communicator and if someone sort of triggers him or pushes his buttons, he's going to bite back. Like he's going, he's going to have something to say. So I don't know if that's true or not because I really don't know him. But like, you know, if he has something to say, he'll, he'll say it basically. Um, also, here at the same time, he's got quite an oval-shaped face too. So he is actually very humanitarian. So um, again, I don't know what his actions have been like or anything like this, but he's definitely got a um, a humanitarian aspect to him, and he does care about people. Uh, but he may need to work on his communication just a little bit around that as well. Um, with his nose here, he's got a very long nose and it's quite broad as well. So the broadness of the nose also indicates how um, supported someone can feel in their leadership. So he has a, a good sense of support, uh, sense of support within himself to lead. And the long nose means that he also <laughs> takes on um, responsibility. He's very, he's more inclined to take on responsibility and, and easily take on those kind of roles. His eyes here are his heart chakra. Um, he's got nice eyes, got brown eyes, so he's very earthy, but they're very small, and so it takes a lot for somebody to get into his heart. He'll keep it kind of locked off a little bit, which, when you think about politics, is probably a good thing because you know there need to need to be some separation that's happening around in that um, in that space as well. His eyebrows. He's a good teacher. And he's got you know they're a bit bushy. They could be more defined. Sometimes his communication can be a little bit misinterpreted um, by the outside world. And um, I feel like he might say things to please other people rather than what's really going on inside for him. So he's always like thinking of the outside world more than really saying how he's feeling about things. Um, which, it can be okay, but it just depends how that's, how that's kind of playing out for <laughs> Um, he's got a very long face here as well, so he's got very high ideals of how he'd like to live his life. Um, he's probably got quite high expectations on himself as well. Um, and so, you know, again, that also helps with that leadership. It, particularly entrepreneurs, I find that that happens a lot as well. Like there's this high expectation of what you want life to be because there's kind of like a vision that you have for yourself and, and those around you too. So I'm not sure if that is a good description of him or not, I'm not, I really don't know. Uh, but I just wanted to use that as an example of how face reading kind of works and what we look at in the face when it comes to personality traits. Because if you can find the, the trait and understand what that is and really work with it, um, then all sorts of things can sort of unfold for you, especially in business. So, how about, oh, is there any feedback on that, by the way? Was I kind of right? <laughs> Yes, so basically with psychosomatics, your body is a reflection of your inner well-being. So if you think about, um, we're, we're all vibrating, but we've all got like molecules inside us. We all start from those molecules, and those molecules are vibrating to form matter, and basically, um, how we're feeling emotionally affects that vibration and that matter. And so the, the result of that is the body that we're standing in today. Does that kind of make sense to you? It's more like uh, because of how we feel, it manifests on our face. Yes. So it could, like, uh, from young, we may, from birth, our face start to change based on how we feel. Yes, exactly. Right. And our bone structure is ancestry, so that comes from our family. So that's why there will be um, sometimes some traits that are passed on from generation to generation through the bone structure. But our muscle and our tissue changes all the time, and it's why sometimes you can look in front of the mirror and you know you'll be like, oh, I'm feeling really great, and then something might not be going great. And you're looking, and it's like, oh, I'm not. I can see that. You can physically see it. 
And so by really paying attention to how your body's feeling and how you're feeling, it's bringing your awareness back to, oh, is this actually working out for me or do I need to make some, some shifts? And I'll, you'll see that more later on in the presentation. <coughs> Basically, to me, psychosomatic therapy is using your body as a compass. So, uh, really tuning into how you're feeling at any given time. And also, if there's any pain and injuries that are happening in your body, it will be indicating you to look at something closer. It depends, I mean it depends what it is obviously, um, and it depends where it is on the face. So say you've got, say um, for example you broke your nose or something, to me I would be thinking that that is to look at part of your solar plexus, your own personal identity and what's going on around you at that point in time that's um, either stopping your personal identity come out or where you're trying to be, uh, trying to express yourself and something was holding you back. Um, probably a better example than a broken nose is when you get a cold or sinus. I always, you know, like people say, oh, I've just got a cold, or everyone's got the cold. Um, but some people don't get it. And I always think, okay, if that turns up for me, what's going on in my life right now? Have I just stepped out of my comfort zone? Am I trying to, do I need to step out of my comfort zone? Um, I always look at it more holistically in terms of that chakra energy and everything that it represents. With depression and dementia. Dementia? Yeah, I can't answer it for dementia, but depression, it de like I would always say. For depression, it depends what that person feels they need at the time. So if they need a specific therapist, absolutely need to go and see them. But at the same time, I think depression is a soul sickness. It means that person's lost their purpose and they're not sure of what's, what's going on. That's my personal belief around depression. Um, and you know, there's so many, there's such a high level of depression in the world right now, but popping pills and things like that is actually masking what's really going on. And it's through exploring the emotions that they're feeling, because depression just means that you're, it's like you're not feeling anything, you're numbed out, basically. It's not, you're not able to really understand what, if you're feeling excited, if you're feeling unhappy, if you're feeling uh, judged, or, you know, like being really specific with what those feelings are. And how I feel psychosomatic therapy helps is it starts you to understand the exact emotion that you're feeling. So you're not just feeling good or feeling bad, it's like what exactly are you feeling at any given time? Because by identifying that emotional state, then you know what to look at next. Yeah? I'm talking about the patient, the people you have to help, even though they are state of mind. Say that again, sorry? The person who is uh, suffering from dementia or maybe depression, we won't be able to know their state of mind. So when we start to help them, yeah, D dementia. I can I can't. I'm, that's not my client, so I wouldn't be working with them. Depression. It's up to the. It's, it's part of it is self responsibility as well, and it depends on the level of depression that someone's feeling. Because there are extreme cases of depression where they need medication. But I, you know, for the states where it's like I'm feeling depressed, like I've had moments where I'm feeling depressed. Even in as an entrepreneur, you can become isolated and feel lonely. And then that can spiral you down, but then it's like, why am I really feeling this? Like, it's allowing yourself to dig deeper. Um, so I do feel like there's a level of self-responsibility to explore and to um, find out all these different modalities and how they can help. Yeah. Okay, so we're about to do some face reading on each other and look at each other's chins. So we're going to look at the shape of the chin, but before we do that, I do want to just um, talk about the base chakra and the qualities. I'll go back to that. Did you guys want to take a photo? There you go. <laughs> These cameras are up. <laughs> you take a photo. So before we go into what the shape of the chin means and how that relates to your personality and in business, 
Firstly, it relates to your base chakra. So I want to talk about the base chakra a little bit. Oops. So um, just so I'm not talking all the time, for those in the room that know about the chakra system, can you share with the room what you know about the base chakra energy and its um, qualities? energy to do more. So it's all about foundations. Originally, does anyone else have anything else they'd like to add to that, to the base chakra? No? Sense of safety? Yeah, absolutely. Big time. Which is what, again, related to money. If we're not feeling like we've got any money, it's like, oh, how am I going to pay my my rent, my mortgage, how am I going to feed myself? All these sorts of fears can start coming up. So the base chakra is the most earthy chakra energy of the chakra system. 